I pen this, my last will and testament, in the final moments before my inevitable and willing death. The hour is 11 p.m., and I sit at my writing desk in my office. My good friend Asugi stands at my shoulder. My name is Barak Von Zeeks, and I killed the captain with a, a musket, and then I was crushed by a fierce beast. A ter terrible beast. <laughs> he has expressed his intent to invoke the dying ritual of the duel, that I may depart this world with honor. An honor of which I am utterly undeserving. The Japanese are a truly merciful people. I, Clint Van Zeeks, Lord of the Manor of the Van Zeeks Estate, hereby confess to the following. I am the killer who has come to be known in society as the Professor, guilty of four counts of murder. I will not hear disc I will not hear discourse the corruption rife among the aristocracy, which is to me, as one of them, so apparent. However, six months ago I took the life of a member of the House of Lords at the heart of the depravity. A demon who habitually sacrificed the common man to further his own interests, abusing his position of position of power. That actually doesn't sound that bad. I would have thought they were doing something worse than that, but um Sacrificing the common man. I mean, it did further his own interests. Let's, let's not, he who, you know, lives in a glass house. <laughs> I mean, I would if I were rich. The law is impotent against such vile avarice. Only a fellow demon can rid society of this menace, this menace to society. That demon was my quarry upon whom I willingly set my great hound. But though I am a hunter of some experience, I am a poor felon, it seems. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would live in a glass house if I were rich. My guilt was at once recognized by another, and I became subject to his extortion. He held over me the threat of exposing my wicked crime to my beloved wife and brother. Under that threat, I have done this man's bidding for months now, killing those he demanded I kill. As I watched my former mentor perish before my eyes at the jaws of the hound I commanded, I realized that I had lost the last shred of decency within me and sunk to the level of a wild beast. There is no path back to the light. Be it I or my dear friend Asugi who dies this night, I am eternally damned. To my extortioner, male strongheart, may you feel the jaws of the beast at your throat every time you swallow. Wait, what did he mean whoever died? Like, he was gonna duel but actually try to kill him? Like, that's kind of rude. They're like, hey, could we, could we duel? Uh, like, I, I, I'm writing my will, I, I want to, I want to die rather than be captured, but I am still gonna try to kill you. <laughs> like, fair is fair. Fair is fair, I am, if I, if I get the chance, I am going to stab you in the brain and kill you. <laughs> so now we know, yes, Clint Von Zeeks was a murderer, but somebody was directing him and naming his victims, his extortioner. Lord Mel Strongheart, it was you! You have to say objection, it was you. Otherwise, it doesn't count. This is court. There are rules. I lied before. Lord Strongheart, a moment ago, you claimed that what the court has just heard could destroy justice in this country. But you weren't trying to protect justice at all. You were trying to do... What you were trying to do was conceal the secret of your true nature countless lives you've sacrificed up till now. <laughs> Azalea, the crime is coming from inside the court. It's true. Spoilers, by the way. <laughs> it just didn't make sense to me that the third, third victim, the former Lord Chief Justice, my, was my brother's benefactor and a man of lofty principles. As I said, Clint had no possible reason to kill the man. 
but you did, didn't you, Lord Strongheart, to eliminate the man who stood between you and the office you'd set your sights on. So you used your own hunting dog, Lord Clint Van Zeeks, to use his own hunting do dog, <laughs> Balmung, to take him down. It had to be done. London's unsavory shadows are deep, and the arm of the law fails to reach their depths. Crime must be cut off at the roots, but the Lord Chief Justice at the time could not see that. He was weak. Lofty principles, you say. Tantamount to cowardice, if you ask me. Which is why I took his place in order to fight the crime he was allowing to spread like wildfire. By murdering the man. The Reaper. The Professor. The name makes no difference. As I've explained countless times already, it was all done for the furtherance of law and order in London. No doves for emphasis. Objection! Are you going to legitimize the murder of my father now, too? Ah, Genshin Asugi. Well, that was unfortunate. I had fully intended to send him back to Japan as we'd agreed. I don't believe you! It was you, wasn't it? You killed him! No, it wasn't me who took your father's life. Then who? On the night following his mock execution, I went to Logate Cemetery at three in the morning with Jigoku. <gasps> Judge Jigoku? There had to be a collaborator on the Japanese side to manage Asugi's treatment. After his repatriation, Jigoku had fierce ambition. It made him easy to manipulate. Ten years ago, after he'd stood trial for the destruction- for the vile destruction of the witness stand, I had words with him. When I told him the position of Minister of Foreign Affairs could be his, he couldn't agree fast enough. Seishiro, you fool, you bucker. As you know, Asugi escaped the prison in a closed casket and was subsequently interred. We intended to dig him out of his grave before he ran out of air. But sadly, all did not go to plan. Ag. There was an unexpected visitor to the cemetery with his own ideas about digging up graves. A man who witnessed what nobody was supposed to see. Enoch Drebber. Of course, I knew grave robbers frequented London cemeteries. But that grave, on that particular night... Blast! If people find out... No, who's this? Blast! If people find out the convict wasn't really executed, the scandal will rock the very foundations of the Empire. Then... then what? Then... Who's this? Now this is the judge. Right? Then... then what do we do? Shoot him, Mr. Jigoku. Shoot Asugi at once. He can't live now that this has happened. He has to go. What are you talking about? You had an agreement. You promised him he could return to Japan. Everything has changed now. If the truth got out because of this, both of us would be finished. Forever. Come on, Jigoku, do it. Pull the trigger. The cutscene is almost over. Shoot! Jigoku shot Asogi from the extremely noisy shadows where we were having a full conversation ending in me bellowing the word shoot. <laughs> the grave robber was so close the blood sprayed over his coat. He fled as fast as his legs would carry him. Then, Jigoku and I put Asugi's body back in the grave from which he'd just emerged. 
When I later learned of the waxwork modeler's presence at the scene as well, I made her swear to two things. Never to remove the professor's mask, and never to speak of the events of that night. Now, am I forgetting? Didn't she remove the mask? She removed the mask and made... Yes, she did. And with that, the secret was buried, along with Asugi's corpse. Uh, no, wait. Didn't she... Did she... This is Madame Two Spells. Did she... She re-dug him back up later with somebody else? That's what happened. She re-dug him up later with someone else and did remove the mask? Because she she did actually... She's like, oh, my art requires that I actually put his real face on there. <clears throat> so, now you know what really happened in Lowgate Cemetery that night. It was Jigoku, your Japanese acquaintance who killed Asugi in the end, you see. He claimed to be the man's friend, but when push came to shove, he pulled the trigger. Just before Mr. Jigoku left the courtroom earlier, uh, he broke a witness stand and it flew into the air uh, inexplicably. Also, he said that the assassin exchange proposal was a demand from his British counterpart, not a request. So you coerced him too, using what happened in the graveyard. By that time, Jigoku was the Minister of Foreign Affairs, negotiating international treaties with the Britain. You can imagine what would have happened if it came to light he'd murdered a compatriot ten years earlier. He would have lost everything. I merely reminded him of that. He would have had no proof, though. He would have just said, "Hey, hey, Japanese government, guess what? Your guy killed. Uh, your guy killed Asugi. Uh, I have no way of revealing this other than, other than detailing my entire list of crimes. <laughs> and also, even then, you just have to take my word for it. I have no forensic evidence whatsoever that he actually did this. How do you sleep at night?" I open my stopwatch and I count the seconds until I fall asleep. These past ten years I've fought tirelessly with the darker recesses of London's criminal underworld. <clears throat> and I've used whatever means necessary to ensure that justice prevails and law and order reign supreme. That couldn't be further from the truth. The fact is, you haven't fought crime at all. How dare you? I saved Clint Van Zeeks from dishonor in his death. Whilst behind the scenes, you systematically buried anyone who stood in your way. And then you made my father take the blame. It was unavoidable. It was the only way to protect our justice system and public order. Let's not forget the others you had killed as well. Ah, oh, that's a good point, because uh, everybody was about to forget. <laughs> S slipped my mind that you also had other people killed. Nobody, nobody jotted it down. Setting the defendant up as the Reaper to cover up the truth behind the murders of count countless... I thought there were two. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Okay, Reaper. Reaper killings. Countless more. That's enough. Do you have any idea of the conniving that led to the acquittals of those wretched criminals? We have to fight fire with Hadokens. Our courts can't function without a Reaper. Can't you see all I've done for this country? This has been my struggle. Objection. <laughs> You've done nothing! It's Lord Van Zeeks here who worked tirelessly and justly in court, whilst enduring the disgrace of the Reaper name. 
and Inspector Gregson, fraught with anguish for having sullied his hands through a desire to do the right thing. Not to mention Genshin Asuki, who risked his life going in pursuit of the truth you tried to hide. No, the darker recesses of London's underworld were largely filled by you. You little... When will you get it through your thick skulls? That it was all for queen and country? I'm tiring of that excuse. You've consistently twisted the truth for bargaining power to make others do your bidding. Nothing more. People who willingly twist the truth and coerce others have no right to call themselves part of the judiciary. I strongly suggest you don't ever talk of justice again. Ooh, ooh, a strong suggestion, a strongly worded suggestion, and a finger point. This man's about to crumble. Grr. Gar. Gar. That's just a repeat of the previous breakdown. That is maybe the the main complaint that I have about this entry in the series. There's like no breakdowns compared to the lunacy that you see in like th four and five and six. Well, well, dear me, my good fellows, dear me. A well-deserved round of applause, I think, for a quite marvelous performance. All right, he's, he's, he's helping a little bit. He's helping a little bit. Bringing it back. Bring back a classic, all right. What are you talking about? Those delightfully grave expressions that beautifully pronounced Queen's English. Why, thank you. See? He knows how to compliment me on my beautifully pronounced English. Chat. Really, our friends from the Far East are quite the picture of industriousness. You fraud, keep your mockery! Please, don't misunderstand. It really is exactly as you've both said. <laughs> What are you trying to say? I have occupied the darker recesses of London's underworld, and how did you put it? Done nothing? I confess it's a little embarrassing to have it pointed out so starkly, but yes. I really have done nothing, which means I can be indicted for nothing. No? What? It's true. Personally, I have committed no crime. I've merely conspired to commit crimes. <laughs> Since when is conspiracy? To... <laughs> I've merely been surrounded by fools who have acted very rashly indeed. <laughs> Objection! Have you ever even looked in a law book? You, you can't get away with that. You've consistently preyed on people's weaknesses. And what threatened them? Are you sure it wasn't just bargaining? <laughs> I would like to address all the good lords, ladies and gentlemen of the judiciary here present. You all know of these darker recesses in our great capital. And deep down, I believe you also know that to fight those who dwell there requires at least some of us to occupy the darkness ourselves. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. So let me appeal to your good sense now. Consider the situation with me. If this catalog of horrifying revelations were to become common knowledge, among the six million inhabitants of London, what might happen? Uh, so we try you in a closed court. Easy. Easy peasy. Easy peasy Japanesey, which is appropriate because of all the Japanese people in the court. To learn that the infamous murderer of royals and nobles was a respected member of the aristocracy himself. 
that evidence was fabricated in the scapegoat's ritual amid secret negotiations with prosecutors to effect a jailbreak. That the Reaper of the Bailey was an organized group of assassins managed by a Scotland Yard inspector. And finally, that it was all masterminded by the Lord Chief Justice himself. No dubs for emphasis. If the general public of Britain knew the truth, all faith in the police and the prosecutor's office would be completely lost, without doubt. Public order in the capital would completely break down, we'd be cast back to the lawless days of the last century. I don't know, I thought, I thought 18th century England was awesome, wasn't it? Precisely. As it was a hundred years ago when one in ten of the population were criminals. Ow. Oh, okay. I guess. <laughs> Think what we've ac Wait a second, hold on. What, what exactly is the crime rate? <laughs> what, what percentage of people have crimed? Is, is it only 10%? Hmm. <laughs> yes, if that all comes to light, the public might decide to replace it with a function in court system. One with rule. A functioning, a functioning court system. One with rules. <laughs> Think what we've accomplished since then. A public policing force. A comprehensive set of laws. And if we want to continue to protect this new era of law and order, I say again, we must at times occupy the darkness ourselves. No doves for emphasis. We have successfully identified and apprehended the man responsible for taking Inspector Gregson's life. That is all that was expected of this trial. All these other matters that have been discussed will be eliminated from the minutes of these proceedings in the interests of preserving law and order, and to protect Her Majesty the Queen, of course. Well, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, what say you? Oh, he has a point. Uh, things Lord Stronghair has done are quite unforgivable. But on the other hand, uh, isn't it our duty to maintain law and order in the capital? You can't deny that the threat of the Reaper and everything here is a witness for the crime rate. And by fair means or foul, that's all thanks to Lord Strongheart. Ah, they're chanting. It, it count, it's official. Technically, technically he, he does win. Okay. Are you hearing this bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> Naruhodo had never heard such bullshit in his life. This is the will of the Br British judiciary? For your rousing response, friends, I express my heartfelt gratitude. Therefore, in accordance with the overwhelming wishes of the court, the records shall be erased. So if I were to stab you right now as you were saying that and you die, that also gets erased. It does. It does. Who's got the sword? Oh, I have it. I have the sword. Which button? I don't remember if I reassigned my buttons. Which one of these attacks the judge with a sword? You have to respect the man's ability to turn a situation to his favor. Lord Strongheart really is a master of manipulation. You've conclusively proven his guilt. I should, just in case, just because it's been very long, I should save again. Let's save. I guess there is an auto-save, which I keep forgetting. But I, I, just in case, let's make sure that we, we don't accidentally have to repeat a three-hour trial. Let <laughs> into a burning ca- yeah, right? Bring on the omnibus. The omnibus of guilt. Yet still he manages to evade justice. I, I just don't know what we can do. Rinosuke. It looks like the trial really is going to come to an end now. I'm almost out of options, I think. There's really only one path left open to me. Wait and see. Raise an objection or use evidence. Uh, what? 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 
Oh, use the rabbit. <laughs> it's my last chance. Yes, as I know only too well, the only thing that carries any weight in court is hard evidence. B but, Mr. Naruhodo, what evidence is there to use at this stage in the trial? I have an idea. I don't know whether anything will come of it, but... If there was ever a time for using this particular item we have among the evidence, it's now. Take that! Oh my, yes, Mr. Sholmes asked if you had that with you earlier. We've exposed all of Lord Strongheart's wrongdoing now. Are we gonna, are we gonna have the, uh, um... The, the Batman Returns ending, where the Penguin is secretly recorded saying, I've played this city like a harp from hell. I've no doubt that Mr. Sholmes had already deduced exactly how the truth would unfurl. So I think it must be time for the great detective to take center stage, don't you? <laughs> yes, he didn't tell me. The first time you pull the ears, it's a walkie it's a satellite walkie-talkie. The second time you pull the ears, grenade. <laughs> he he really should have been more explicit about that. Let's take the hair by the ears then, and he. Yoisho. Ow, 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 ow. My dear fellows, must I remind you every time a gentle tug will suffice. Mr. Sholmes, you're looking in quite the wrong direction, Mr. Naruhodo, because I'm over here. Ah, Mr. Naruhodo, he's, he's... Oh, okay. H hologram technology to go with the satellite? Okay. It actually is? It actually is hologram technology? I wasn't expecting you back, Sholmes. Delighted to be here again. To be to be telepresent, to coin a phrase, a hundred years before computers were invented, Lord Strongheart. What what is the meaning of this? Bailiff, seize him, put that man in irons. This is this is a closed court. You've been warned once already, man. What what do we can't get out of him, my lord? <laughs> we just go right through him. <laughs> I love the dance. Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't think we were allowed to do this in Phoenix Wright. I thought it was a This is this is a very serious game. Do these people understand? I'm afraid your efforts are wasted. You see, the great detective you see before you <laughs> is entirely composed of light and shadow. An image, if you will. <laughs> Mr. Naruhodo, I must congratulate you on your fine deductions. <laughs> Mr. Sholmes, what on earth? Are you familiar, I wonder, with the invention known as the telephone? Well, yes, I hear that some public telephones have been installed recently in Tokyo. The sound of the speaker's voice is converted to an electrical signal and transmitted instantly to another place. Quite. Sounds are transmitted, so could not images keep them company, I mused. Iris and I did some modest experimentation to develop such a device spe specifically for this very day. Modest experimentation, <laughs> experimentation Mr. Sholmes? What a modest description. Uh, somewhat incidentally, I thought we might just as well transmit an entire scene. Somewhat incidentally, Mr. Sholmes, now you're just being a modest. Do you mean to say you're not actually here, Sholmes? Ah, I knew my trusty partner would have no trouble grasping the, song, the concept. <laughs> yeah, we... we... when somebody... Case three, there was like, oh, they they teleported this guy. They beamed him, you know, 50 feet over uh, onto a, a thing. And it was like, no, that's ridiculous. That can't happen. That's made up. But this, this is fine, though. He's just dancing around a courtroom 
he, he's invented everything. <laughs> Except he's grasping the stand to steady himself after your shock arrival. Poor father. I would have hoped he might have been forewarned, being the great detective's great partner. Leave my courtroom at once. Get out, for I swear to you. Dear me. You want me. <clears throat> no, that that is that is the next line, Garrett. <laughs> Dear me, you, on the other hand, Lord Strongheart, appear to have a very poor grasp of the situation. Allow me to reiterate, I am not here, which would, I hope, lead naturally to one asking, where exactly are you? The very question I was awaiting. I am, at present, enjoying the air in a rather splendid garden. A garden? Not just any garden, you understand. A garden at Buckingham Palace. What? You can't be. Buckingham Palace. What's Buckingham Palace, Mrs. Usado? I've never heard of it. Is it in your book anywhere? Do you ever read the news, Mr. Narahodo? Um, Mr. Sholmes? Is Iris with you there? Ah, well now. Iris is currently enjoying some tea. With Her Majesty. Her, her Majesty? Not just any Her Majesty, you understand. Her Majesty, the Queen of London. What? What on earth is all this about? Buckingham Palace is Her Majesty, the Queen of London's residence in London. Order. Order in the court. I demand immediate silence. Her Majesty, the Queen of London. You can't be- I mean, no. This is some sort of unforgivably distasteful trickery by a third-rate detective. That's all. Unforgivably distasteful trickery. What an apt description. A closed court session attended by elite members of the judiciary is a rare event. I presumed that Her Majesty would be more than a little curious about the proceedings. So, I decided to show her everything from start to finish. You showed her? Indeed. By dint of the Herlock Sholmes remote cinematograph. You meddling. <laughs> this is some kind of nightmare. Just as I appear to be standing before you, regaling you with talk of my latest invention, no doubt you've inferred that the reverse is also true. You... you don't mean... Her Majesty has seen and heard every moment of the proceedings. I assumed there would be no objection. After all, every trial in this country is conducted under the auspices of Her Majesty, as you know. You... I confess I am quite impatient to hear Her Majesty's opinion about the unforgivably distasteful trickery in which you've engaged over the past ten years. No. I was merely... Oh, sorry to keep you all waiting. Vicky and I had so much to talk about. Iris, there you are. In fact, I have a little message here from Her Majesty. Is Sholmes... Mate? Mate? No, I guess not. <laughs> a, a message. Well, if everyone is sitting comfortably... Um, actually, no. All of us are standing. <laughs> I was going to complain about it, actually. Shouldn't I have a chair? Ahem. Forthwith, and with immediate effect, all authority previously afforded to Mel Strongheart is hereby revoked forevermore. Furthermore, he will be prosecuted for crimes against his country in a public trial by jury in the coming days. So, it seems that Her Majesty doesn't believe we need to fight fire with fire. Justice in this country needn't be administered from the shadows at all. Mel Strongheart. The darkness you fostered to conceal your despicable actions these last ten years is a thing of the past now. 
not that wasn't me that was it was actually vo i was i was just lip syncing the game actually did that they actually had queen victoria uh voiced herself it'll be in the credits i imagine when it pops up with like the voice actors after today your brand of law and order has no future because no longer are you the lord chief justice in the eyes of the law, and of Her Majesty the Queen of London, you are nothing but a criminal. Adjourned, 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 adjourned. Court is adjourned. Oh, I thought they were going to hit him! <laughs> oh. Uh, Alright, alright, just as good. Ow! Ow! Oh. Guilty. <laughs> Lord Clint Van Zeeks left a will in which he confessed to everything. When those words came out of Asugi's mouth, it deranged me completely. I knew I must do anything and everything in my power to contain the situation. But I couldn't find the damned document. I searched his cell, but it wasn't there. Which precipitated the jailbreak plot, I presume. What do you mean? <clears throat> the need to obtain that will was all-consuming. I was sure that if I facilitated Asugi's escape, he would emerge with the will somewhere on his person. But despite searching his limp body in the cemetery that night, it still eluded me. It never even crossed my mind that it was concealed in the sword's hilt. <clears throat> what pains me now? is that my brother left this world without a word to me. I'm sorry, Lord Van Zeeks. Oh, what's this on the back of the... Actually, I never did look at it, did I? I never did look at it. Can I turn it around? Can I look at the back? Oh, I can't examine it. <clears throat> In point of fact, I think perhaps that isn't the case. Sorry? How can that be? <laughs> there is more to his last will and testament. <laughs> what? I guess maybe we did just kind of stop reading halfway through. <laughs> As I confront the prospect of my demise, I feel bitter regret for my younger brother. Barak, you have always looked up to me. And now you follow in my footsteps to become a prosecutor. It is my fervent wish that my unspeakable deeds should not hinder your advancement. <laughs> How will they law now? They'll have to... They'll have to... I don't know. I ask not for understanding, for none could understand my depravity. I ask only for forgiveness. Asogi is a fine detective and a hunter worthy of respect. He has agreed to honor my final two wishes. The first is that this document survives. The second, I cannot commit to paper. I have confessed my sins to my wife. May she find resolution in my death. With my eternal gratitude to my Japanese friend, I rest my quill. Clint Van Zeeks. Is this actually, yeah, the story of, 
how the the, the Hadouken Giltometer was banned in the Kingdom of London. <laughs> Like, no, they used to really do it that way. Glint. Mel Strongheart, you colluded with Seishiro Jigoku in a criminal plot so immense it spanned oceans, and you cold-heartedly murdered all those who knew the truth about what happened ten years ago. But why did you set about that now, a whole decade later? <clears throat> to ascend to the very peak. These last ten years made me realize... Being the Lord Chief Justice wasn't enough. Short of becoming Her Majesty's Attorney General, I could have no real power to effect the changes needed in this country. And for that promotion, I needed to ensure no remnants of the past remained. <laughs> How could you? I like everything to run smoothly, in the exact manner that I prescribe, like a well-oiled machine. And I was just a step away. And for your ambition to succeed, did you even bother to count the number of brill- <laughs> Did you bother to count- That's what he's upset about. He's like, I could forgive everything else, but did you even bother to count the people you had killed? We got it! We did it! <laughs> uh, Mr. Reaper, are you not forgetting something? Such as... You very much adopted your usual prosecutor-like demeanor in the, pre in the proceedings now. But... The reality of the situation is that you are the defendant in this trial. Ah. However, the presiding judge would appear to have fallen from the bench, as it were. First one into the chair is the de What? What? You can't just snap your- f Does he have the infinity stones? He snapped his finger and a judge appeared. May I suggest, therefore, that we entrust the final adjudication to an old friend. My lord. As a member of the judiciary, I have been following the proceedings from the gallery. And I must say, I shan't ever forget the extraordinary battle between good and evil that I witnessed here today. The darkness that has blighted justice in our land these past ten years has at last been dispelled. Thanks, in no small part, to the efforts of a bright young star from the east. Defense Counsel Naruhodo. Yes, my lord. On behalf of everyone here present in the Old Bailey, I give you my heartfelt thanks. You are too kind, my lord. The first time I faced you in court, just under a year ago now, I had the faintest of intimations that if British justice, so warped and twisted over its long history, was finally to know change, this might just be the man to do it. What? But at the time, I wouldn't allow myself to acknowledge the possibility. I couldn't overcome my hatred of the Japanese after the circumstances of my brother's death. <clears throat> Mr. Naruhodo, allow me to apologize for countless discourtesies on my part. You are a, la a lawyer of boundless talent. The many, many wine bottles that I threw at your head were in retrospect, uncalled for. <laughs> oh, Lord Van Zeeks. When I first arrived in Great Britain, I was literally a nobody. Certainly not a lawyer. The truth is, my fortunes have entirely been made by the miraculous people I've met. My best friend, 
Kazuma Asugi, who led me here to Britain in the first place. My loyal and ever-patient judicial assistant, Miss Susato, who helped me study to become a lawyer. The brilliant Lord Van Zeeks, who never failed to challenge his Nipponese rival. And, not to mention, the exceptional master of logic and reasoning, who showed me the true art of deduction, Mr. Sholmes. Saving the best for last, Mr. Naruhodo. What a relief. I'm well aware that without all these people's help and support, I wouldn't be where I am today. The truth is a guiding light that always leads to happiness. I've lived by that principle for a long time now, but actually, it's not true. The truth can also cause great pain, sometimes even leave people on the brink of despair. And for that reason, there are those who feel the need to hide the truth, or do it instinctively, even. But as soon as we allow our eyes to settle on something other than the truth, the darkness takes hold. And from there, it grows, until eventually, it makes us blind to the guiding light of the truth altogether. <laughs> so that's why it's my belief that we must all resolve never to avert our eyes from what is just and true. so that we can continue to walk the straight and narrow path ahead. Well, I must excuse myself now. But before I go- Oh, what's my- Are the, the batteries on, on the transmitter that you gave me are only good for, for 14 hours? They're only- <laughs> 20th century, early 20th century batteries in, in a tiny little uh, uh, 7 gram stuffed rabbit uh, are, are only good enough to power holographic transmitters for, for 14 hours, so you have to go now? Okay. But before I go, Mr. Naruhodo, let me compliment you on your grand opus. What? Without your beautifully composed case against Lord Strongheart, her Majesty would have been unable to act. Thanks to you and your fellows, the haunting undertones corrupting Britain's justice system have been silenced. Um, thank you very much. So, until our paths cross again somewhere. Well then. It would appear that this long trial has finally come to an end. My apologies for any anxiety caused, my lord. I'm quite sure we shall meet again here in this courtroom before long, Prosecutor Barak von Zeeks. In conclusion of these proceedings, I hereby declare the defendant, Barak von Zeeks, We did it. <laughs> the audience, yeah, the audience was chanting very loudly for Strongheart. <laughs> they unanimously wanted the corruption in the system to continue. That is all. Court is adjourned.